some people are undeniably good at the internet, social media specifically. They are able to capture the best parts of their personalities, condense it down. And um, yeah, I found that uh, with those people, it can go one of two ways. Like you meet them IRL and you're impressed because you're like, wow, you've you've really basically taken all the fun and energy of your actual meat body, living, breathing presence and somehow made that viable online through a social media platform or even just on WhatsApp or text messages. You can kind of like have fun banter and you feel like you're hanging out with them almost just exchanging DMs or random bits of banter online. And then there's the other people where it's weird where you're like, I should like you IRL, but you're doing some type of weird magic trick where you've got like such an online brain where you're more online, you're like a better version of yourself online. And when I see you IRL, there's the magic isn't there. You kind of lame. And it's interesting. Like I actually, as I'm talking this through, I think maybe the explanation is, is that these people are too online and that's their main priority. That is like their main mode of communication. So showing up and meeting you IRL, going for a beer, having lunch, doing something like that is like, well, secondary, who cares? If I can impress you online, if I can get you to encourage you to retweet my shit and um, I don't know, just uh, if you love me online, that's all I need. I'll show my face at the party. I'll, uh, I'll come to the birthday party if I absolutely have to, but really I do my main work online. Have you ever met anyone like that? It's interesting. You feel like you've been conned somehow. Online, they're all dynamic and fun. IRL, they don't live up to the hype. It's interesting. I think it's quite a good talent. It's like modern networking, right? If you can be, uh, if you can have a Instagram profile that reflects your personality perfectly, it's your business card. And um, yeah, it's like, well, you could, uh, you could be disappointed by this person. But then you get kind of addicted to their online content. You're like, I want to see what they're up to. This is their bread and butter. This is what they do well. I'll humor them when I see them online. I mean, sorry, IRL. But I'm getting the main show online. So they almost kind of like train you to be like, don't expect much when you see me IRL. There's the inverse as well. There's the people who are spectacularly entertaining who have like zero online presence. Where it's like, yeah, if you could capture this magic and find a way to put it online, you would be a fucking, I don't know, someone would make a documentary about you. You'd be hilariously entertaining. You should have a podcast. But then those people, you know, maybe there is a certain, there's a certain talent to like capturing banter and, you know, when, when it's not, Something changes in the atmosphere when you hit record. And I think that's why it takes ages for people to find their voice. If they just, you know, even when it comes to something like writing, if you just freeform writing, it's not in a, it's not destined for a certain project. It's just a random kind of dump of thoughts and feelings. Then you can get some real fucking gold. And but then you put the parameters around it, like oh, this is destined for a article or a novel. Then the pressure's on, and it's hard to live up to the hype. So certain people can kind of jump over that barrier, um, and other people can't. And I've been like, I don't know, I'm starting to think because you look at that and you think, isn't that sad? Like someone would put all that time and effort into being 
that cool online and then like zero effort into backing it up when they see people IRL. It's like everyone's got low level autism or these people specifically because they're just like neglecting the IRL experience. But I don't know if everything's online and that is your reputation now. Isn't it, doesn't it open more doors? You can, you can be fucking, look at the tape bros from the war room in the Bugatti. The fucking global baby. They're in, they're in their, um, the, the, the war rooms in, uh, Dubai or Romania, wherever the fuck they are, but they got fans all over the world because they have captured their personalities online and, and that's spread them around. Does it make you lonely or does it make you, does it open doors for you? You'd be able to hang out with a bunch of people wherever you go because they know you from your online shit. The problem is, is that you're just not very good IRL because you spend your whole time online. But then if everyone's online all the time, maybe no one's good IRL anymore. No one can banter. So if you can't beat them, join them. Like what's the point of also like by doubling down on who you are online, like this is who I am. This is my sense of humor. This is the shit that I'm into. You're going to find people just like you all over the world who share very, very similar interests. And it's kind of akin to when you go to high school with a bunch of people. And, and if you're lucky enough, you find your kind of like friendship group where you are like-minded, you're interested in the same things. But with that whole experience, that coming of age or growing up together, there's a lot of kind of like social jostling going on. You're kind of like sharing interests to kind of like compete and um, one up one another. And and so I, I guess there's kind of like a, or even just kind of like everyone's, you, you basically don't trust what you're into with all, all your adolescent friends because you were kind of like, you were going through a massive change. It was puberty lad. <laughs> Things were wild. But now I guess when in theory you're a fully formed adult, you can find people where it's just like, yeah, through happenstance, you could be 10 years older or younger or different sex or different religion. doesn't matter. You're interested in the same shit. You can assume that you're coming at things from the same, like a more pure angle as opposed to like, we're trying to survive high school with one another. Let's really get into the black rebel motorcycle club. <laughs> um so yeah, that's kind of like, it's it's cute in a way. It's like a very pure friendship. So why would you bother with people you just bump into um, through random people you meet uh, in, in your local circle, your hometown? Because those people aren't exactly like you. But maybe that's good. Maybe you need a bit of variation. You don't just want to hang out with people identical to you. I feel like this is me just trying to cope in terms of like uh, allowing myself to become more <laughs> purposefully socially awkward. Wouldn't consider myself a socially awkward person, but I do kind of like feel a bit jealous when someone is very socially awkward being like, oh, that would be kind of fun to really double down on that and just not have to put up with any of the bullshit of uh, social niceties and stuff like that find myself experimenting more and more with that as I get older, the uh, temporary autism, put on my temporary autism hat and alienate at will. All right. That's enough for today. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next one. Bye.